look at it. It's absolutely magnificent. 4,000 years ago, Egypt was one country that was filled with intriguing structures and traditional practices. The city is a mysterious one, and every other day, a new discovery is being made. A mummy here is in the shape of a human mummy because it has little feet uh, modeled. You'll be surprised at how much each discovery tells us about what life was like in ancient Egypt. Today, we'll be looking into the 15 strangest things recently discovered in Egypt. Get whatever you'll need now. We're about to go excavating. White Desert Located 28 miles north of a town called Qasr el Farafra in the Farafra Depression is Sahara el Beda, also known as the White Desert Protected Area and commonly known as the White Desert. It's a national park in Egypt and was first established as a protected area in 2002. Being in the White Desert is like being on the moon's surface. Many travelers find it difficult to leave once they get here. Here's why. In the desert, there's a myriad of land formation caused by centuries of erosion and sandstorms. Millions of years ago, the desert was part of a sea filled to the brim, yet it wasn't always a desert. But in time, the water dried out and there was a savanna. Elephants and giraffes came to graze there, and prehistoric men would go there to hunt. Then there was this rise in global temperatures and the decentrification of the grasslands. That was the final blow for the once water-filled area, and it left us a gem, a white rock formation between the dunes. These unique calcium rock formations have different shapes across the landscape. Some resemble mushrooms, some ice cream cones, tents, and crickets, and some have even been nicknamed chicken and atomic bomb. The park is now a refuge for various animals like the Dorcas gazelle, sand cat, red foxes, Barbary sheep, jackals, and the endangered rim gazelle. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. It's not every time you see a statue with a human head and animal body, and even if that's common, it's not every time you see it on water. So what's this one doing here? These scientists' terrifying new discovery in Egypt shocked the entire industry. The ancient Egyptians were fond of statues. They made sculptures to honor their kings and deities, and they had a lot of kings and deities. This statue was probably a statue of a goddess and will have a specific significance. For its position, our guess is that it's being descended into the water, probably for an exhibition. Or maybe it was being brought out. What do you think? What do you think this giant statue is? Share your opinion with us in the comments with the hashtag missing topic. We'll be waiting. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Roman era mummy and Egyptian oasis. The only thing a lot of people know about Egypt is that they have mummies or that mummifying their dead bodies is part of their culture. Well, this is one exciting mummy story. A Roman Egyptian mummy portrait was found and Northwestern University scientists and students tried to unravel the mystery behind the little girl. Who is she? Or should we say, who was she? What materials was she buried with? How was her body prepared 1900 years ago? and what material is present in her brain cavity. One of the scientists admitted that solving the mystery of the mummy was like a 3D puzzle. The Roman Egyptian mummy is one of the hundred portraits in the world, so these mummies have a lifelike painting of the dead person included in the mummy wrappings and placed directly over their face. The girl's face is painted with beeswax and pigment, her dark hair is gathered at the back, and she's dressed in a crimson tunic and gold jewelry. Researchers need the findings from all the scans, studies, and analysis to understand the context in which the mummy was excavated and the Roman era mummification practices. Good luck to them! Mm -hmm. Giant statue of Pharaoh Ramses Archaeologists from Germany and Egypt found a giant 8-meter statue immersed in groundwater in a Cairo slum. They say that the statue represents Pharaoh Ramses II, the ruler of Egypt 3,000 years ago. You can't help but wonder how the statue sank and was hidden for so many centuries. It stands 26 feet tall. The discovery was made in the eastern part of modern-day Cairo, near the ruins of Ramses II's temple. The Antiquities Ministry called it one of the most important discoveries ever. Do you agree? The king whose Colossus was found, Ramses the Great, was the most powerful and celebrated ruler of ancient Egypt. 
He was the third of 19th dynasty of Egypt and ruled from 1279 to 1213 BCE. He was a pretty big deal, hence why his statue was also a big deal. During his reign, he led several military expeditions. Ramses II also expanded the Egyptian empire to Nubia in the south. He achieved so much that his successors called him the Great Ancestor. They didn't find the entire statue. The scientists found the bust, the lower part of the head, the right ear, and a fragment of the right eye. They continued working on digging out the entire sculpture. Another reason scientists were so sure the statue was of King Ramses II is that he founded the Sun Temples in Heliopolis, where they discovered the statue. The temple was one of the largest in Egypt until it was destroyed during the Greco-Roman times. <laughs> Baron Impain Palace Edward Louis Joseph Impain, a Belgian businessman, industrialist, engineer, and amateur Egyptologist, was awarded the title of Baron by the King of Belgium. He built the Baron Impain Palace, a historic Hindu temple-inspired mansion in Heliopolis, Cairo. Impain was a world traveler. He traveled to Brazil, Congo, Mexico, and many more places because of his love for the nomadic lifestyle. He went to India and lived there for a long time till he decided to change his home address to the ancient city of Egypt. He completely fell in love with Egypt, and in his will, he wrote that he wanted to be buried in the country. For a place to live, he chose a spot in the middle of a desert and built the legendary palace we're discussing from 1907 to 1911. Back then, the palace was extra beautiful. It had luxurious gardens, Belgian mirrors, and gilded doors. The mansion is decorated with detailed animal and human figures inspired by Hindu and Buddhist legends. Now, the villa is believed to be a site for satanic parties, animal sacrifices, and heavy metal parties. There have been rumors of strange occurrences like furniture moving across rooms or the Baron's daughter appearing. Well, we can't confirm those rumors. We do know that the architectural masterpiece attracts stares and camera clicks from tourists as they pass by. <laughs> Serapium of Saqqara Serapium comes from Serapis, a combination of Apis, the name of the sacred bull, and the gods Sorak and Osiris. The Serapium of Saqqara was the ancient Egyptian burial place for sacred bulls of the Apis cult at Memphis. The bulls were believed to embody Ptah, an ancient deity. For about 1400 years, 60 Apis were buried at the Serapium. The burials initially began in isolated tombs, but as the cult grew, underground galleries were dug creating connected burial chambers. On a visit to the Serapium, you'll realize some places are spiritually calm and some feel like pure evil. Now let's tell you exactly what happened at the Serapium. When the bull died, priests searched all around for its reincarnation. This animal would be identified by its sacred coloration, black and white with a white belly and white triangular mark on its forehead. It also have a crescent moon on its side, an eagle with spread wings on its back, and a tail with long hairs parted in two. That's a long list if you ask us. The tombs that are present today represent generations of bulls and the initiation of a cult as early as 4000 BC. <laughs> Lost Golden City Experts call it one of the most significant archaeological finds of the past century in Egypt. The Lost Golden City is the largest ancient city ever found in Egypt. For years, many archaeologists from home and abroad searched for the town but couldn't find it. But archaeologists and former Egyptian Minister of Antiquities Zahi Hawass and his team were too dedicated to stop trying and they eventually found the city. They found the city while searching for a mortuary temple. The 3,000-year-old city was alive in the golden age of the pharaohs, hence the name before it got lost to the sands of Egypt. This was the period where Amhotep, the ninth king of the 18th dynasty, reigned. He commissioned the construction of a lot of public buildings and huge temples in his time. The archaeologists were elated because the city would give a glimpse into what the life of the ancient Egyptians was like. They dated the Golden City to the reign of Amhotep III, one of the most powerful pharaohs of Egypt, who ruled from 1391 to 1353 BC. The 2020 excavation revealed many archaeological finds like colored pottery, jewelry, scarab beetle amulets, and mud bricks bearing seals of Amhotep III. Within weeks of digging, structures of mud bricks began to appear in all directions. They'd started the excavations on the west bank of Luxor, 300 miles south of the capital Cairo. Seven months later, they found several areas and neighborhoods, even a bakery 
a residential area, and an administrative district. Karnak Temple The Karnak Temple complex is made up of decayed temples, chapels, pylons, and other buildings near Luxor, Egypt. All these buildings form a village, hence the name Karnak, which in Arabic means fortified village. The temple's construction began in the reign of Sinroset in the Middle Kingdom. The Karnak Temple was built as a cult temple dedicated to the gods Amun, Mut, and Khonsu and is the largest building for religious purposes ever constructed. It covers an area of 100 hectares. The central part of the temple is dedicated to a male god associated with Amun-Ra. The area around this sanctuary is called Ipet Sun, meaning the most select of places. The south is the sector dedicated to his wife, the goddess of Mut, who was also the mother goddess and mother of everything in the world. A part of the temple was also dedicated to her son, the god of the moon. The north dedicated to the god of war, and to the east is the area dedicated to the sun disk. Apart from being a religious complex, the Karnak Temple was also useful as a treasury, administrative center, and place for then pharaohs. Benben mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Stone The Benben Stone was the mound that sprung from the primordial waters Nu, upon which Atum, the creator deity, settled. This is from the creation myth of ancient Egyptian religion. The stone is said to have been kept in a shrine dedicated to Atum. A myth isn't really a myth if there aren't different versions of it. Another version of the Egyptian creation story is that deities were produced by the Atum's copulation with his own shadow. What do you think of that? His children, Tefnut and Shu, left him on the Ben Ben stone to build the rest of the world, but soon he started to worry about them. In search of them, he removed his eye and dispatched it, and the children returned with it. When he saw them, he shed tears of joy, and the tears that dripped on the Ben Ben stone turned into human beings. In all the versions, the Ben Ben Stone plays an important role. What a unique stone! The Ben Ben Stone is also an architectural term for the tip of a pyramid. This feature can be referred to as Pyramidian. <laughs> the Dashur Pyramid Apart from mummies, pyramids have the most lasting and compelling impression of all ancient Egyptian structures and artifacts. These pyramids were royal necropolises, that is, royal cemeteries. The pyramids were built for the sake of burying the owners in the chambers inside. So instead of digging up graves, these ancient Egyptians built pyramids to lay their deceased to rest. They believed that they would resurrect with all the possessions they own in their lives. So they built these pyramids to kickstart their journey to the afterlife. Dashur is a royal cemetery located in the desert on the west bank of the Nile, 25 miles south of Cairo. It houses several pyramids built between 2613 and 2589 BC, two of which are among the largest and oldest in Egypt. These pyramids are the Red and Bent Pyramids. The Bent Pyramid was the first attempt to build a smooth pyramid instead of the usual stepped one. It was built by the first king of the fourth dynasty. The Red Pyramid was named so because of the red writing on the facing rocks. It was the first successful attempt to build a classical pyramid shape with no inclinations. The pyramid has three funeral chambers, and the third one is an architectural masterwork with beautiful stones on the roof. The Colossal Statue of Ramses II Italian traveler Giovanni Battista Caviglia discovered the statue of Ramses II in 1820. The sculpture is 12 meters high and was carved during the reign of Ramses II, pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of Egypt, in the New Kingdom of Egypt. It was found in a temple in Memphis the capital of the Old Kingdom. The statue is made of limestone, so it's not surprising that it weighs more than 80 tons. It was found broken into six pieces, and the early attempts to restore it failed. The Egyptian Prime Minister in 1955, Gamal Abdel Nasser, made it to Bab El Hadid Square in Cairo, and there the pieces were joined, and the statue was restored to its full height and elevated on a three-meter frame at the edge of a fountain. Because of its size, it was very difficult to transport the ancient king sculpture. Many plans to move it have been canceled, and once a replica was made and transported, and once a replica was made and transported weeks before the scheduled move of the original statue, this was done to test the suggested relocation process. It was a 10-hour journey, and the structure had to travel vertically. Ramses II is truly a great figure because 3,000 years after his existence, his statue was still treated as royalty. Hmm. Time Valley of King Luxor 
one of the best places to truly experience the history and myth of Egypt is on the west bank of the Nile River, at the direction of the setting sun and the underworld of ancient Egypt. This place is called the Valley of the Kings, one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. It used to be part of the capital city of Tibbs and was the site where the heavily decorated tombs of deceased New Kingdom pharaohs were constructed. Some of the kings during this period were Seti I, Ramses II, and Tutankhamun. Queen Nefertiti was also from this era. There are over 60 tombs in this area, but only a few are open to the public. The first tomb is labeled KV-1, which belongs to Ramses VII, and the last is KV-65. So yeah, the Valley of the Kings is simply a mass burial ground or cemetery for notable people. You can pay a visit if you want to. It'll be an unforgettable experience. Dendera Light Here's another glimpse into Egyptian mythology. The Dendera Light is a symbol in the Hathor Temple at Dendera in Egypt. It's a depiction on a stone relief and over the years there have been several interpretations of it. The light is located in a long underground passageway under the temple that's covered in bas-relief carvings just like the rest of the temple. Egyptologists interpret the relief as a combination of a lotus flower, a jed pillar, which is a symbol of stability, symbolized by outstretched arms, and a snake rising from the flower through the womb of Nut, the goddess of the sky. This is a depiction of the sky. It's also confusing, we know. Researchers and Egyptologists are also confused about it. The temple was filled with several reliefs depicting Harsomptis emerging from a lotus flower in the form of a snake. So the Dendera light is supposed to be a variation of this motif. Some have interpreted it to mean God resting on a lotus flower. Basically, the Dendera light stirs up a controversy about the existence of electricity in ancient Egypt, even though it's been proven that electricity didn't exist back then. The motif is often used in the same context as Baghdad battery, meaning that ancient Egyptian cultures were more advanced than we believe today. <laughs> Cleopatra's Underwater Palace Ever heard of Cleopatra? We're sure you have. Let's share a little story. 1400 years ago in Egypt, there was a dreadful earthquake and tsunami that affected the great city of Alexandria. Island sank, taking down with it Queen Cleopatra's palace and Alexandria's old lighthouse. The president of the European Institute of Underwater Archaeology spent 10 years planning an expedition to uncover the mysteries of Cleopatra's sunken palace and bring it back to light. At the beginning of the expedition, they found clues like jewelry, rings, hairpins, a 30-meter-long wreck of an ancient cargo ship, and glass cups. Later, on the eastern side of the island, they found the remains of old docks and large pillars made of red Egyptian granite. The clues inspired them to keep going. Finally, they discovered the wooden foundation of Cleopatra's palace and statues of Godio and his team believed to be part of Cleopatra's shine, two sphinxes and a statue of her high priest. Sadly, these artifacts were dug out of the water and kept in museums around the world. No one's going to be able to see the items. They did take pictures before lifting them out, though, but we know pictures can't do it justice. Mummify animals We've mentioned mummies a couple times in this video. Did you know there are also mummies of animals? Yeah, the ancient Egyptians were on a roll. Animals back then were mummified for various reasons. Some of them were sacred animals, some were offerings, and some were food mummies. Egyptians worshipped sacred animals, whose souls they believed lived in the lower world. Sacred animals were treated very differently from pets. While pets were buried in their owner's graves, sacred animals were buried with respect given to the gods. They were buried in their own graves, an example in the Serapium of Saqqara for bulls we talked about in number 11. These animals were worshipped in their specifically built temples and shrines. These animals include bulls, cats, crocodiles, hawks, and beetles. The Egyptians also mummified their pets. They loved them so much and wanted them to have eternal life, so they mummified them before burying them. The Egyptians had so much faith in the afterlife, don't you think? The mummified animals were also esteemed as votive offerings, that is, intermediaries between the gods and humans. The mummy makers would collect carcasses of wild and domesticated animals to ensure a continuous supply of creatures for embalming. You can find some mummified animals on exhibition in the Hall of Flora and Fauna in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Coffins with mummies 
In a site near Cairo called Saqqara Necropolis, Egyptian archaeologists discovered a large number of priceless artifacts. Alongside dozens of bronze statues were dozens of adorned coffins with their owners mummified inside. The sealed sarcophagi date back more than 2,500 years. The cemetery was initially named Bubastion after the ancient Egyptian goddess Bast. That was because many of the statues they found depicted the goddess. However, after archaeologists discovered mummified animals and figures of other deities, they renamed it the Cemetery of Sacred Animals. The statues they found, about 150, portrayed the following gods, Isis, Hathor, Anubis, Osiris, and Nefertum. About the coffin, don't you wonder, like us, why so many coffins were buried in one place? It's even more mysterious that they were all mummified and were still intact when they were discovered. They've now been close to 500 mummies found on this site. Who knows how many more are out there? With all these discoveries, there are many more that haven't been discovered yet. In many areas of Egypt, there are untold secrets and we may never get to hear them. Maybe our kids, or their kids, or their grandkids will, if they're curious enough or lucky enough to stumble upon these displaced, buried, and hidden ancient Egyptian artifacts. Mm -hmm.